Hey, uh, I, Sam Valentino, private tour detective, have some good cartoon related news to share here for once. I am sure some of you may have already heard about the impending TV network, MeTV Tunes. Well, it's going to be a syndicated free to air affiliate, very much like the main MeTV is. And it was just recently announced the Boston area is getting it. It'll be airing on WWDP in Norwell. One of those small, low-powered, local paid programming stations. And it's currently accessible via the Xfinity Comcast cable system here. Yeah, the channel owner's family has been using cable television since the late 1980s. So anyways, MeTV Toots is a joint venture between MeTV's parental... We go broadcasting and Warner Brothers Discovery. Not too surprising, given the main MeTV network shows quite a bit of animated content owned by Warner, such as the Flintstones, Popeye, Tom and Jerry, and the other NGM classics, the Looney Tunes, and the Jetsons. And on MeTV Tunes, in addition to those MeTV mainstays, along with the Walter Lance cartoons that began airing last September and some of the Columbia and Paramount cartoon shorts. They're also going to be showing a lot of different anime content from the 20th century owned by Warner Brothers. Some stuff from Comcast and Universal, some DHX Wild Brain content, and a few other sorted odds and ends. From Hanna-Barbera, they'll be showing Yogi Bear, Top Cat, Johnny Quest, Peter Potamus, Adamant and Secret Squirrel, Wacky Races and the Perils of Penelope Pitstop, Scooby-Doo, Where Are You, and the new Scooby-Doo movies, i.e. the OG Mystery Corporate shows. And Josie and the Pussycats, and the Smurfs, and Two Stupid Dogs with Super Secret Secret Squirrel. Even some of their lesser known shows, like Wait Till Your Father Gets Home, Challenge of the Go-Bots, and the Completely Mental Misadventures of Ed Grimley, and the Greatest Adventure Stories from the Bible. And on the Universal side, in addition to Woody Woodpecker and the other Walter Lance cartoons, they're running the Harvey Tunes stuff and the Underdog Show. And from Wild Brain, they're running the original Rocky and Bullwinkle Friends. And a few Deke shows like Inspector Gadget and ALF, the animated series, and its spin-off ALF Tales. To fill out the EI requirements that the FCC mandates to such channels, you're showing reruns of Warner Brothers' Hysteria and Turner's Captain Planet and the Planeteers, a show that started out at Deke before moving to Hanna-Barbera halfway through the show's run, resulting in the animation quality significantly improving. Also from Warner's library, they are showing the Beetlejuice Saturday morning cartoon they co-produce at Nelvana, Ruby Spears' Mr. T and Police Academy series, Freakazoid, The Mask, Saturday morning cartoon by New Line of Film Roman, and even the Duck Dodger series of 20 years ago. As that and the Tune In With Me reruns will be the newest content the channel will currently be airing. They're even going to show reruns of the original Speed Racer and Marine Boy animes, and some of those British Super Mario Nation puppet shows from the 60s like Supercar, Fireball XL5, Captain Scarlet, Joe Knighty, and the Thunderbirds. Wow, they sure are going out. I hope this is a success. This is an impressive starting lineup. It reminds you when Cartoon Network was first starting up 32 years ago. They had a healthy blend of classic and contemporary programming then. Cartoon Network also started out with virtually no new original shows, but even when the channel was starting up, the plan was to eventually make some new and exclusive animated content for the channel, especially since this was shortly after Turner had acquired Hanna-Barbera, which is the reason why Captain Planet moved production to there, as I had already mentioned. And of course, things changed during the 2000s, especially the introduction of Boomerang, People are also saying that MeTV Toons is similar to how Boomerang originally was. But of course, Boomerang is largely inaccessible to the American public, especially since Xfinity Comcast always refused to carry it, being the largest cable provider around. Well, at least unlike from the mid-2000s to early this decade, the Looney Tunes are airing on quite a few channels at once, Besides MeTV and Boomerang, they're also on Discovery Family, and now they'll be airing on MeTV Tunes. So at least, 
There is a ray of sunshine poking from the dark storm clouds of the Warner Brothers Discovery merger. But my hoping this goes well. I still remember the first time MeTV showed any animated content in 2012 when they attempted a Saturday morning block called Anime TV, showing some cartoons on my classic media, now part of Universal, such as He-Man and She-Ra and the Mr. Magoo TV cartoons, even Gumby, back when classic media owned that franchise with PrimaVision. And yes, I'm aware of how Bento Box Entertainment is going to mess up Gumby, but that's for another time. They also ran them alongside a couple Sid and Marty Croft shows like HR and Puppet Stuff and landed a loss as those were a staple of Saturday morning television for a long time. But this thing only lasted a year. Then in 2019, MeTV began rerunning the Flintstones and it ended up being very successful there. Soon leading to them kicking off 2021 with their Tune In With Me weekday morning cartoon show. And it's also a throwback to those old kitty cartoon shows of a live action host. And their Saturday morning cartoons block that's also been successful. So it's justified that MeTV would now launch an all animation channel to ride on this. And in addition to doing better than that 2012 anime TV attempt. <laughs> It's also been more successful than when Paramount Global's retro cable channel, TV Land, attempted such a Saturday morning block in 1999, Super Retrovision Saturdays. And while it was a fun concept, they could only really show content Paramount and Viacom owned at the time, such as the Sid and Marty Croft shows and the cartoon spin-offs and their live-action TV shows, along with the Hanna-Barbera Harlem Globetrotter series and Flegmation, or I mean Filmation's Mighty Mouse and Heckle and Jekyll shows. So that did limit things. Plus, it had to compete with Disney's one Saturday morning and Kids WB Saturday morning cartoon lineup, running Pokemon at the time. And this was back when broadcast TV stations were still carrying that tradition. So after 1999, Super Retro Vision Saturdays was done for. But aside from that and anime TV, much of Filmation's content hasn't aired in TV reruns for a long time, compared to Hanna-Barbera's library, of course. One of Filmation's most popular shows, Fat Albert and the Cosby Kids, won't be airing anywhere anytime soon for obvious reasons. And it also depends on who owns what. Universal's classic media currently owns much of the Filmation library, with a few rare exceptions. Also, regarding of as Daffy Duck and Porky Pig meet the Groovy Ghoulies crossover movie reference on his channel. That time, the channel creator tried uploading a re-edited version here on YouTube with Daffy and Porky Tweety's voices fixed. But the Flatfoots at Warner Brothers took it down, claiming they owned the whole thing. Jeez. But besides that, this MeTV Tunes network definitely sounds promising, and it's set to launch on June 25th. That's more than two weeks away. But before that happens, I'm returning to the Heinz Convention Center this upcoming weekend for Fan Expo Boston. I'm gonna see if I can find any more clues relating to Copley's disappearance from Anthony New England. I'll be there Saturday, June 15th, and Sunday, June 16th. Maybe this time I'll get some leads. And of course, you mugs all stay tuned to the Subtube channel to see what deductions I come up with next.